Hi, welcome to this tutorial. My name's Philippa and I'm going to be showing you how to make a font using Adobe Illustrator CS4 and Font Lab Studio 5. Uh, so with Illustrator open, uh, create a new document and give it a name. So I'm going to call this one my new font. And then we need to make sure that we are set, the units are set to points. You're creating a typeface so you need to be working in points. Don't even think about working in anything else. Points is where you need to be. And you need to make sure that the width and the height are both set to 1000 points. So this is going to give you the 1000 point UPM square, and here it is, that you will be working in. That's the size of your artboard. Because I don't currently have a font on the go right now, I'm going to actually borrow some letters from the Myriad Pro typeface. So I'm just going to be working with four letters today. You will be obviously be working with an entire alphabet. Um, I'll just create the following letters, X to give us the X height, D to give us the height of the A sender, P to give us the height of the D sender, and then a capital H to give us the cap height. So if I just move these, I'll just swap these around, see if I can do that. The reason I've got both um, the D and the H, if you look closely, you'll notice that there's quite a difference in height between the H here on the right and the D, the ascender here on the left. So that's actually quite standard for the height of the capital letters to be slightly shorter. When I was reading all the font books, how to use font lab, how to create a font, the one thing I couldn't figure out was how big should I make my letters. Um, the magic number they give you is about 700 from the baseline, which is where all the letters sit, here on the baseline, to the top of the cap. And I was like, okay, that's great, but what if we've got this situation here with the A sender, it goes taller, and what happens with the D senders? So how tall should the overall height of the letter forms be? The answer is 1,000 points. Let me just make that quite clear. 1,000 point. Oh, look, we'll make it red. Yeah, so that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for 1,000 point. We're aim and you measure 1,000 point from this mark here. I'll just draw that right to this mark here. So that's where we're measuring in there. This height in here is 1,000. Just get rid of my little... Yeah. My little red doodle lines there. Get rid of the 1,000 point so I can keep on going. How do I scale all of these to be the correct height? Um, first off, what you'll notice is that I've actually got letters here. Um, you will be working with um, shapes, possibly drawing with the pen tool. If you've been drawing with my good friend the pen tool, you'll have paths and shapes, whereas I've got typable letters. So I'm just going to right click on these and go create outlines. Now I've got paths just like you're working with, and you'll notice that everything is selected from here right down to there. So if I just change the height of overall, we should be in business. Go to the transform palette, make sure that the link icon is turned on. And you can see I'm currently at 334.583 point high. I just type 1000 point, hit tab or hit enter. And lo and behold, it has scaled everything. Next thing I need to do is make sure that the bottom of the P, the D center, sits at the bottom of the artboard. So I'm actually going to group these together. And then I'm going to align them to the bottom of the artboard. So click on the little align to make sure it says align to artboard and then click on vertical align bottom. Perfect. I'm just going to go through these four letters. You'll be working with the entire alphabet but the next bit will take you a while. Um, it's basically sorting each letter onto a different layer. So we'll, we'll leave this one um, as layer P. I'll just, I just double clicked here and called it layer P. And I'll ungroup these so I can move them. So you basically want everything sitting on the bottom left. So it'll be, if it's got a descender or on the baseline left if it doesn't have a descender. 
So I'll just align that to the left. And then I'm going to cut this X. So Control X or Command X. New layer. Double click. Rename it X. OK. Select it with a target. Command F or Control F to paste in front. You can also go paste in front here. What that will do is put it in exactly the same place. It's equivalent to InDesign's paste in place command. And again, I'll align it to the left of the artboard. And just repeat for these other two letters. So new layer. That was D, command F, align left, cut, new layer. This one's H, paste in place, align left. Great, so we've got a good start here. It's all looking like a little bit of an alphabet soup. That's fine. What I'll do is save what we've got so far. So I'm going to make a new folder, a new font. There we go, a new font, and we'll save this AI file in there. I'm a big fan of save as you go. So I'm going to turn off everything except the lowercase x. Now we're going to use this to start figuring out where our baseline and um, other key dimensions are. This is all in the process of working this out so we can transfer it across to FontLab. Right click, show rulers. There we go, they're turned on at the top and at the left. Zoom in a bit. What you want to look at is actually the baseline of this. So go in as far as possible. And now we're going to drag from the top ruler, click and drag, to bring a guideline down. Lovely, and we'll do another one for the top. So this will give us the X height. So we need this, when this is measuring on the vertical axis here, that's called the Y axis, um, we need it to be starting at zero at this point here. And you notice that currently zero is way down here at the bottom of the artboard. We need to move zero up to here. So I'm going to zoom in once again into that point. And I'm going to re-register where zero is. So come to the top left of the rulers, click and drag, and you'll get the crosshairs and just drop them there. And now zero is now here at our baseline. So left zero and uh, vertical zero is there. Great. So now I'm going to start, I'm going to turn off the X and I'll turn on the D. So we need the height of our ascender. So you notice I'm clicking on the artwork to select it. That just lets me uh, line up with the um, bounding box here, this blue or coloured line. So I'm dragging down another guide. I'll do the last one. This is looking at the descender. So now I'm just going to turn them all on and make sure we've got all of the guides that we need. So we've got the descender, the baseline, the X height, the cap height, and the ascender. The problem is now they're all scattered across different layers. You can see as I turn different layers on and off, the guides turn on and off with them. Um, just grab the layers uh, to select all the layers. So I've just grabbed them like that. Command X or Control X to cut. And then choose a layer. I'm going to choose uh, the, the X layer and once again Command or Control F to paste them in front. So now they're all in one place and they should all turn off when I turn on and off the X layer. This is fantastic. Once again I recommend you save about now. Save as you go. For the next thing you will actually need a pen. Have we got one? Yes I do. You need a pen and a piece of scrap paper. because you're going to need to write down a couple of um, important uh, numbers. So we'll start from the bottom. If you just drag over and select the bottom um, guideline, this is our descender line, and we can actually get a numerical value for whereabouts that is in relation to the zero of the baseline. 
So we know it's going to be a negative number because it's below the zero. And if we head up, we can actually see the y value up here. And it says it's negative 218.061. I wouldn't worry about the 0 0.061. In fact, I'm liable to delete that, which is what I do. 